tempers, you know, it takes a little bit of organisation to get these model lifeboats through the crowd because some of them are very big, they're almost certainly a two-man lift. So we're just assembling our flotilla for lifeboats. We have another three more yet, possibly even four more to go on the water. And what we've got them all nicely on the way and all the coxswains of the lifeboats are happy. And I'll hand you over to my fellow commentator who educate you on the world of lifeboats. Class. Um, called Lifeboat, it's a Baltic exchange based at, um, in Devon from Salkham. Lovely. Let's um, call down the latest. Uh, there's another one over there. 1609 and 1624 are also Tamar's. Let's have those down. Good, so you've got three Tamar class. These are the first lifeboats that the RNLI had that are fly-by-wire. So instead of actually having a helm wheel, either inside or up, up, up top of the flying bridge, they've actually got two little toggle switches where they drive them like that. And each of those boats in real life has a bow thruster on it as well. While we're talking about bow thrusters, we'll bring the, big, the largest boat that the RNLI have ever had, 1729, 17 metres, seven classes coming out, belong, belongs to Rob here, and that's based on the boat at Falmouth, 12 scale. This actual model is totally scratch built. This is one that either um, speedline models or models by design have not created. Rob's done the whole lot on that one, totally scratch built. Beautiful model, We've got a camera in the front of the wheelhouse, so sometimes he has a screen here and he can see what's going on when it's right out on the lake. And it's also, but not switched on the moment, got a superb sound system. Now that boat was preceded by 5211 at Falmouth, which is the old Aaron class, and that belongs to John, it's coming out. Now it's only taken us seven years to get to this, they've lined them all up, and this is quite a nice way and a different way of doing it. So there we are, that's an Aaron class, a lot of those boats were sold out of service from the RNLI, and they've gone to places like Greece, China, Finland, um, they're used by the Canadian Coast Guard. Lovely, another 14th scale in the far, far corner is a 14 metre tramp class, that belongs to Jeff Carter, he's just coming forward. It just goes to show that you can get a second hand model, and then he's totally stripped it and refurbished it, and he's done an absolute job, a superb job on that, and a lot of patience. I'd like you to put the hands together to just say how good that is, because he's spent lots of hours on that. We'll do it now so we don't forget. Well done, Jeff. It's superb. Thanks. Good. Now, there's an older boat in that corner, all right? And all these other boats I've mentioned, and we'll come to a couple of others, the channels in a minute. That's um, a Watson class, 41 foot. And Watson was a naval architect, he designed that boat. In fact, actually, he designed a lot of boats uh, that were different sizes of the same boat. Now, that one, the, the actual boat was based up in um, Fleetwood, Fleetwood, that boat. And just to show you the difference to the two boats I'm going to speak about in a minute, in 1938, that boat cost £6,638 to build, all right? And that was built at Cowes, the actual real boat. And now we're going to bring the two Shannon classes down. 1302 based on the Dungeness lifeboat. And Chris's Shannon here based on whatever he wants to base it on when he puts his numbers on. They're driven by water jets, not propellers like the rest. And these boats now are costing two million pounds each in real life. All right? And these are Shannon classes. It's the first time the RMLI has named a lifeboat after a river in Ireland. And you can see how easy and manoeuvrable they are. They've now, I think they've built about 30 of these. I think they're going up to almost 40 in the fleet. And they're replacing, if you know your lifeboats, they're replacing the Mersey class and in some places the Time class. And it's an unusual system they're doing now. And then the one up at um, Workington is the only one in the country which is lowered on davits. Two big arms go out, they put slings underneath, it gets pulled out of the water, up onto the top of the pier, and put in the boathouse that way. Very, very unusual way of doing it. And we've also, I've just found out this weekend, because we're always learning, um, down in the West Country somewhere, and I've already forgotten it in my memory, six, uh, models of 16 metre boats, models of 14 metre boats, and models of 13 metre boats. The water jets on the new Shannon classes are well-proven Hamilton water jets and they're powered by two Scania 
um, 650 horsepower motors. They're not um, truck engines that have been marinized up. This is the first time that Scania has built an engine specifically for a lifeboat and not to go into a lorry and big truck. And of course you can see now all these other lifeboats on the water, um, before they're released from the boat yard to the RNLI, they have to go through an upright test where they actually put straps on it and then they pour the boat over and it has to go through 360 degrees in the water and it's given so many seconds for it to self-right and come back up again. When you look at the fleet with one down there, the old one, look how exposed the crews were in those days compared with what they are now. And in lots of these boats, if you go on them, and a lot of the stations now leave themselves open for visitors, you'll see when you go off the boats that they've got the little small stainless steel urns. And most of them, then, on the front hatches, there's the trend class coming round, you'll see it's got three hatches on the floor deck, or the nose of the wheelhouse, the one furthest forward is when they get the survivors on board, there's a ladder in there and they go down and they come home so they don't get in the way of the crew in the wheelhouse or up top or on the deck, they come that way. Which, you know, most of us, that's where you're going to get most of the buffeting. But I suppose if you've just been picked up out of the 26th wave at sea, you most likely don't worry too much. Or if you're green around the gills, you're most likely not going to get any green or anywhere. Also, another thing when they pick up survivors, and I know these days... Well, stern drives and other facilities. Thanks, Steve. Just a little quickie there. You saw Chris going down <clears throat> just a little bit over the speed limit and then pulling it up. It isn't just that model that does that. In actual fact, Gary Underwood right, gave me a superb photograph of the actual boat just going around the needles on the Isle of Wight doing exactly that. Um, it can die, it can break the actual, I've forgotten that, it can stop in the length of its own hull, which is 13 metres. So, although I know we don't, didn't want him doing that and asked him not to, Chris being Chris and being on quote unquote holiday did it. However, it can do it. There we go. Thanks very much, Steve. Well, thank you very much, Chris. If we could get you to now perhaps uh, gently come back into harbour. I used the word gently there, but I don't think that translates into French. <laughs> and we'll just let the waves subside a little bit, and then we're going to put the large models of the ferries onto the water. I was about to say, we just put in the floating harbour, because some of the ferries uh, have thrusters on them, particularly bow thrusters, but we do have one vessel, and excuse the technology, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't understand it, but we have one vessel that have, has azimuth pods.